Classifying Living Things. Rattenborough here. Do you remember who I am? I'm here now to help you learn about how scientists sort or classify living things into groups. Since I am an expert on animals, we will focus mainly on animals. First, I'm going to ask you two very important questions. How do you know if something is living or non-living? What important characteristics do all living things have? All living things create energy from food. All living things can have babies or make other living things just like themselves. All living things have a life cycle. They start out small and then grow. All living things change to fit in better with their habitat. All living things are classified by their characteristics. Plants make up one group of living things. We know this because plants have the same characteristics that all living things have. Plants create energy from food. They make their own food using the sun, water, and gases in the air. Plants make seeds that become new plants. Plants grow from small seeds into seedlings and become adult plants. Plants can adapt to their habitat. For example, all plants need water, but a cactus in a dry desert does not need as much water as other plants. Plants have the characteristics that all living things have. Animals of all shapes and sizes are living things too. So animals also have the same characteristics that all living things have. Animals get energy from the food they eat. Animals can have babies. Baby animals are small, but grow into adult animals. Animals can adapt to their habitat. For example, the fur of polar bears looks white, so they can blend in with the snow where they live. Animals have the characteristics that all living things have. Plants and animals are both living things, but plants and animals are different in important ways. For example, animals move from place to place, but plants do not. Scientists study how living things are alike and different and sort or classify them into large groups called kingdoms. There are five kingdoms of living things. You have just learned about two, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. You will learn about the other kingdoms in later grades. The living things in each kingdom can then be sorted into more specific groups. Scientists study animals within the animal kingdom and classify them by the characteristics they share with other animals. One way scientists classify animals into more specific groups is by checking if an animal has a backbone. Insects do not have backbones, but birds and fish do. So animals with a backbone are in different, more specific groups within the animal kingdom. Insects make up the largest group in the animal kingdom. But there are other large groups of animals, such as birds and fish. You will learn more about other major groups in future chapters. Scientists classify living things into five kingdoms. They classify animals into other groups by their characteristics. At the top, we have living things. Then from left to right, kingdom, kingdom, plants, animal, kingdom. Then from animal, we have invertebrates and vertebrates. We classify the things around us so we can get to know our world better. As we learn about living things, 
we also learn about ourselves and our place in the world. So far, scientists have classified over one million different kinds of animals. Most of these are insects. Many scientists think there may be close to ten million other animals that still have not been classified. That's all for now. Rattenborough over and out. I'll be back in the next chapter to tell you more about how animals are classified into different groups. Insects are the largest group of animals.